Sussex, Venn diagrams, and Tolstoy. <laughs> These are the three things that I'm going to mention three times. But before that, I'd come to really the theme of my talk, which is how to live and what to live for. A student, in fact, uh, the head of the Students' Union at Regent's College, which is now Regent's University in Regent's Park, went for her first interview a few months ago. And she went to a hedge fund. And she was there prepared to say exactly how she would be able to help this hedge fund do its job. At the end of the initial meetings, she went back to see the CEO, who sat her down and said, we're delighted you're here today. What are your values? I'll come back to values because the theme of my short talk is values and how to live and what to live for. And if you look at your life, and there's different ways of looking at it, you can look at it in economic and in social and in personal terms. And for those of you like me who can't exactly define what a Venn diagram is, I'll tell you that a Venn diagram is all possible logical relations to, between a finite collection of sets. But what it really means, and that's the truth of the matter, is that we're really interested in what happens in that middle part there. If you then take the economic aspect, of course, if you're a student, you're at school or at university, or one of these days you might get a job, part of your, your economic issue there is, is the job or your student work. Then there's your home. Uh, most of students will live with their families, probably wishing and hoping that they'll get homes of their own sooner rather than later, and some will and some won't. And then, of course, there's the question of money. You might need a little bit of money or a large amount of money, but, of course, you want that money to fulfill some of your aspirations in life. And then you come on to the social aspects of your life, on to your friends and your family, with whom you're usually friends, but not always, and society, which can be defined in a very narrow way or a very wide way, depending on where you are and what you're thinking about the world at that particular time. But I want you to think all the time in the Venn concept. After all, it's 1880. It's a well-established concept. But look at the way the circles interact intersect in the middle. And that's where, in a way, if you're going to ground yourself, you want to be on all of these. And then perhaps the most important of all is the personal, the outer and the inner. Well, the outer is pretty clear, and we know what outer means. It's to do with the way you lead your life from day to day, the things that you're interested in, your job, your school, uh, your um, family, uh, your fun, your friends, and all sorts of other things. Um, but as well as that outer one, there's an inner one. And the inner one is entirely up to you. For some people, it's spiritual. For others, it's religious. For others, it's perhaps to do with meditation. For others, it's something else. But A.N. Whitehead, a hundred or years ago, said that religion, or indeed inner self, is what a person does with his or her quiet moments. And those are what those quiet moments are. And again, values comes into it because in, in one way or another, as we shall see, values integrates your inner and your outer self. Working on all these issues, you've got to think about your head, your heart, and your body. Your head is fairly clear. It's to do with thoughts of one kind or another. Your heart is a literary way of talking, but it's perhaps to do with compassion or caring or love. And then your body. And your body, again, is to do with three things. And if you look at the, uh, the body, there's three things that are involved with it. The first one is to do with the fact that, did you know that you've got three brains? You've got your left brain, you've got your right brain, and you've got a lower body brain. 
Now, some of you will be as ignorant about that as I am, and others will know it so well. But apparently, in your lower body, there are neurons exactly the same as in your head. And of course, that hasn't gone unnoticed in other uh, areas of the world, in India and in China. But those, that lower body uh, involves you in three things in particular. It obviously deals with your movements. It deals with your way in which you act in all sorts of ways, in sensitive ways, in sensitivity. And, of course, it also deals with sex. Then, if you then take the next movement, you come back to this question of how to live. And lots of, lots of people will ask all the time about how to live and they'll discuss with their friends and their families and their teachers and others how to live. Sequentially, quite often, and very often later in life, people ask what to live for. And the question then comes, is this sequential area, way the right way of doing things or there is there another way in which through the Venn concept they could inter interreact together? You know, there's a lot of ways in which values come into our talk today. The Daily Mail, um, three weeks ago, talked about values on the front page on Thursday and on Saturday. British values it talked about. The second point is that firms, once very easy to sort of say, particularly at the moment, oh, we know about all these firms and what they do. But you know, if you go to a large organisation, in the city, for example, you'll often find there are three types of firm. There's what they did in the past, there's what they're doing today, which is often having to pay and remedy what they did in the past, and the third one is what they're going to do in the future. And you will be surprised how many very large firms indeed are completely and utterly values-driven today. And so are a large number of business schools, so are a no large number of universities. There's two things, though. One is you define your values, and that's 1%, and 99% is how you, how you get them across. So the issue, again, really, is, is it possible to look at how to live and what to live for in the centre of your life and join those two together, not leave the how to live for till much later? And if you do that, bear in mind that values are not necessarily moral, but they can be to do with morality. Not necessarily ethical, but they can be. But they're what you stand for. And the question I ask you is, what are your values? If you Google, you can find 250 types of different ways of values, but you might want to cut down your values to two or three, three to five, to think about it. If you do, it might help you in your life. And also, it might help you if you're like the student at uh, Regents University. It might help you get your next job. <laughs> so how to live and what to live for, that's really what I want you to take away from this talk. The only thing I will point out, though, of course, is that I promised at the beginning that I would mention sex, Venn diagrams, and Tolstoy for three times. And I now have. Thank you. <laughs>